do a few more questions in the exercise that we did yesterday, exercise 4.3. Let's look at number three. So we have to integrate dx over x plus one, then x squared plus one. Okay, so this one is already factorized for us, so we don't need to do that. And in the numerator, we can see that the degree is less than that in the denominator, so there's no need to do any division. Now we can just proceed to uh, decompose this into its partial fractions, which will make integration much easier. So we have a over x plus one, and this one is linear, so it's just a, and this one is quadratic and it is irreducible. So when we write it in terms of its partial fractions, we write bx plus c over x squared plus one. Okay, and then the way we solve this is exactly the same as we did the other ones. We would find the numerator and compare it to the numerator that we have over there. So a multiplied by x squared plus one plus bx plus c multiplied by x plus one. This should be equal to one. Okay, so uh, you can substitute minus one here as that will get rid of this term here and then we can solve for a. So we start with x is equal to minus one. Okay, so when x is equal to minus one, we say that this is equal to zero. And then we have a uh, times two is equal to one, which means that a is equal to a half. Okay, then if you like, you can multiply out all the brackets and compare the coefficients of your x squared, x and the constants with what you have on the other side, or you can still proceed to make another substitution. So the substitution you pick is any number you like. As long as you substitute it correctly, then uh, you will be able to work out B and C. So zero is always a good number to substitute. So we say X is zero. Then here we'll have A times one. So we just have a half plus, then you can see the B will disappear. Then I have C times one, and this is equal to one. Okay, then solving for C, this means that C is also equal to a half. Okay, so I've solved A and C. Now solving for B, I can make another substitution. Uh, the substitution, like I said, is really up to you. So I say X is equal to one. So if X is equal to one, I have half times uh, two here. So I have a half times two because A is a half there. And then uh, B times X, so B times one plus C, which is a half. And here I have one plus one, which is two. And then on the other side, I have one. So we have to simplify this and solve for um, B. So here I have a half, I can divide, yeah, I can divide everything by two, then I have half plus B plus half is equal to a half. So that's B plus one is equal to a half. That means B is equal to minus a half. Okay, so now I have my A, B, and C. I will substitute them over there and then integrate what I have here. 
So what I'm integrating after I have decomposed it into its partial fractions is a half over x plus one plus the in, uh, I have b that's minus half x plus a half over x squared plus one dx. So this is what I have when I decompose it. And we have uh, this one pretty simple to integrate because we just have ln. And then this one here, we've uh, talked about uh, terms like this where you have to split it up. One fraction will have the numerator, which is the derivative of the denominator. And then with the other one, you have to use your arc trig or arc hyperbolic functions. So here, doing that, I have, let me just take the half out, 1 over x plus 1 dx. And then I have minus a half the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And then I have a half 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, so this one we know will just be tan inverse. And then this one over here, we need a 2 here and another half outside. So this half will turn into a quarter. So we have a quarter and then we put a two over there. Okay, now we can just integrate everything directly. So this is equal to half ln of x plus one. And this one here uh, is minus a quarter ln of our denominator. It's one over four, x squared plus one. And we said this one here is tan inverse of x. So this is half tan inverse of x. And then you add your constant of integration. integral of dx over x to the power of 4 x to the power of 4 plus 4 x squared plus 3 okay so here again what you need to do is factorize the denominator sorry this is 4 x squared Okay, you need to factorize the denominator. You should notice that this is quadratic or you can rewrite it as a quadratic uh, expression. So you can factorize it in the same way. So this is x squared squared, and this is just x squared. So you have something squared, that uh, term without the square and then a constant. So this is quadratic. You look for two numbers when you multiply them. Uh, the answer is three, and when you add them, the answer is four. So that's three and one. So you open your brackets, you put your variable. Okay. Okay, so our variable here is x squared. 
And then we put our two numbers, say plus three, plus one. And now it's factorized. And after you've factorized it like this, you should always check if it's possible to factorize um, these terms here. Uh, these cannot be factorized any further. So the only thing to do is to break it down into its partial fractions. So we have, okay. So because these are quadratic, we have AX plus B over x squared plus 3 plus cx plus d over x squared plus 1. So this is how we break it down or decompose it. And then following as usual, we compare, we add the two fractions and compare the numerator with the numerator we have over there. So if we multiply this out, we have ax plus b multiplied by x squared plus 1 plus cx plus d multiplied by x multiplied by x squared plus 3 and this should be equal to 1. Okay, so here, because there aren't any numbers, you can substitute to make any of the terms zero. Uh, what we can do is just multiply out everything that we have and then compare the fact, the coefficients of x squared, x to the power of three and so on. So multiply ax times that, this times that, this times that, this, and so on. So when we say ax times x squared, we get ax to the power of 3. And then ax times 1, that is ax. And then b times x squared, this is bx squared. And then b times 1, this is b. And then the second pair of brackets, we have cx times x squared, this is cx cubed. And then cx times 3, we have 3cx. And then d times x squared, we have dx squared. And then d times 3, this is 3d and this should all be equal to 1. So all our terms with x squared, we have ax cubed and cx cubed. That will give us a plus c x to the power of 3. Then our terms with x squared, we have b and d. So we have b plus d. x squared. And then our terms with x, we have a and 3c. And then terms without x are b and 3d. So plus b plus 3d. This is equal to zero. Okay, uh, not zero, equal to one. Okay, then uh, we just compare and come up with uh, equations. Okay, so here we have a plus c is equal to zero because on the right hand side the is no x to the power of 3 term. So that means the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is 0. And then this one as well, we have we have a plus 3c x. There's no x term here. So we have a plus 3c is equal to 0. And then we have B plus D is equal to zero. 
And we also have B plus 3D is equal to one. Okay, so those are our equations. We can solve each pair simultaneously. Here we can subtract uh, this one from that one. And then we have minus 2C is equal to zero. This means that C is equal to zero. Okay, and if C is equal to zero, this means that A is also equal to zero. Then we do the same thing over here. Uh, B plus D, B plus uh, 3D is equal to one. We can also subtract and we get minus 2D is equal to minus one. This means that D is equal to a half. And if D is equal to a half, using, if we substitute it here, it means that B is equal to minus half. Okay, so now we have our A, B, and C. We can replace them in the decomposition of the partial fractions so that we solve for, uh, so that we solve for Mm, so that we integrate now. Okay, so what we are actually integrating is uh, we have AX, but A is zero, uh, plus a B, which is minus a half, over X squared plus three. Let me just see. Okay, it's x squared plus 3. And then we have um, cx, which is 0, plus d. d is a half. And then this is divided by x squared plus 1 dx. OK, so again here, um, this one is straight tan inverse. This one over here, we will have to rewrite it because we know tan inverse is x squared or something squared plus one. So we need to rewrite this one first. So we can take the half outside and then in the denominator, we would factor out uh, the three. So we have minus a half, the integral of one over three x over the square root of 3 squared plus 1 dx. And the other one, we just take the half out and we have 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, then this 3 can also go out and uh, multiply with this half, but um, or it's it's a one over three. <sighs> okay, but here in the numerator we know that we need to have the um, the derivative of this term here, and the derivative is one over square root of three. Okay, so let's do that. So we have minus square root of three over six, then the integral of one over the square root of three over x over the square root of three squared plus one. So here, when I multiply this term and that one, I get one over six, which is half times one over three here. OK, so just rewrite it like that. And then the other one, I'll just repeat. OK, 
So now we can integrate everything all at once. This is minus the square root of 3 over 6, and this is 10 inverse of x over the square root of 3, and we have a half 10 inverse of x, and then we add our constant of integration. So that is the integral of that one. Okay, so use that method when you have a quadratic factor that is irreducible. And one more. So number 18. x to the power of 3 plus x squared plus 4 over x squared plus 4 squared dx. Okay, so this one, um, again, our denominator has um, a quadratic factor, but this time it is repeated. So just like when we have repeated linear factors, you have to build up until you get to the exponent you have over there. So our first denominator will be x squared plus 4, and the second fraction's denominator will be x squared plus 4 squared. And if the, this was to the power of 3, the next denominator would be x squared plus 4 to the power of 3. So you must build up until you get this exponent over here. So uh, here we have ax plus b over x squared plus 4 and cx plus d over x squared plus 4 squared. That is how we would decompose it into its partial fractions. Then combining these two, we'll look at the numerators and the numerator and compare it to the one that we have over there. So we have ax plus b multiplied by x squared plus 4. And then we have a cx plus d. That doesn't have to be in brackets. This should be equal to the numerator that we have over there, which is a am I getting a which should which is equal to two x cubed plus x to the power of two plus four. Okay. Then here again, because there isn't really anything that you can uh, substitute to um, get rid of one term and then directly solve for one of the letters, what uh, might be useful is just multiply everything out and then we compare the coefficients of the powers of x. So ax times x squared, we get a to the power ax to the power of 3 and then ax times 4 we get 4ax and then b times x squared we get bx squared and then b times 4 we get 4b and cx plus d this is just equal to 2x cubed plus x squared plus 4. Okay, then we can we collect all the terms with um, x cubed, x squared, x, and so on. So x, a, x cubed is by itself. So a, x cubed. Then b, x squared is also by itself. Then the terms with x, we have 4 a, x, and c, x here. So that is 4a plus cx, and then the terms without x, we have 4b and d. So plus 4b plus d, and this is equal to 2x cubed plus x squared plus 4. Okay, so now comparing, you can see here, 
a x cubed is the only x cubed term, so this means that a is equal to 2. And same thing here, b uh, x squared is equal to uh, 1 x squared, so this means that b is equal to 1. Okay, so we've already solved for a and b, then we look at this one, a 4a plus c, there's no x term here, so it means 4a plus c is equal to 0. And in the last one, 4b plus d, there's no x term, that means that is equal to 4. B plus D. Is equal to. Four. OK, so we already know what A is. A is two. So this means that C is equal to minus eight. So this means that C is equal to minus eight. And we know that uh, B is one. So this means that D is equal to zero. OK, so now we have all our terms. We can write down what it is we want to integrate. This is a X plus B. A, we say it is two, so it's two X plus B, which is one over X squared plus four. And then the second fraction was CX plus D, which is minus 8X plus D, which is zero. This is divided by X squared plus four, the whole thing squared DX. So this one, you can just write it nicely as minus over there. Okay, then we uh, just proceed to back to integrate. So this one over here, uh, we can split it up two fractions. The first one will be 2x over this, which uh, will lead to ln, and then one over x squared plus four, and then this four here, we have to make it a one by factorizing so that we can use tan inverse. And then this one over here, uh, we just need to divide by four here, and then our numerator will be the derivative of this denominator. And then we just use the integral of x to the u to the power of n. All right, so this is the integral 2x over x squared plus 4 dx plus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx and then minus um, 4 here the integral of 2x over x squared plus 4 squared dx so the first and the last integral, we can do them right away. It's just this one over here. We said we need to factor out the four and then make sure the numerator we have here is um, the derivative of whatever we're squaring over here. Okay, so I'll do that just here because I don't want to write a lot of things. So we have one over four, this is x over 2 squared uh, plus 1. And uh, yeah, this is dx. So this is 1 over 4 or a half and then a half at the top. Then I have x over 2 squared plus 1 dx. OK, so this is how I need to rewrite this one. And then when I integrate, it's just 10 inverse. 
So I'll just copy everything to the next page. Okay, so this one, we said when we rewrite it, what I should have is a half outside. And then in the numerator, I have half dx. And then in the denominator, I have x over two squared plus one. That is what I should have. Okay, so everything is set for integration. Then we just proceed. The integral of uh, this is just uh, ln of x squared plus four. And then here, this is half multiplied by the integral, half multiplied by 10 inverse of x over two. So half tan inverse of x over two. And then the last one, uh, this will be, the integral of this is just x squared plus four to the power of minus one, and then we divide by minus one. So this will change to a positive four. So we have plus four over x squared plus four, and then you add your constant of integration. So the only tricky thing about uh, this partial fractions is getting your algebra correct. So if when you, yeah, so if your algebra is not correct when you're decomposing, then uh, it is everything after that will be wrong, obviously. Mm. Mm. I'm a bit confused. Man. If you multiply a half with a half, won't that give you one over four? Yes. But aren't you trying to get one on the top? I'm no. a bit, I'm a bit out here. Why are you trying one at the top? If if you multiply the half with a half, isn't that supposed to give you the one at the top or something? No. There's this one over four here. So if okay. I take the one over four out, I have one at the top. Okay. Okay, so now what we are actually supposed to do today, these are trigonometric integrals. Now this is the longest or there is a lot that is involved in this trigonometric um, integrals and just this topic itself it is very long okay and how you should be revising for it is not wait until the week of the test to think you are then going to learn everything in time for the test you absolutely will not what you need to do is you need to be doing some integrals each and every single day so that all these techniques and um, yeah, all these techniques are in your mind. So when you look at a question, you will know this is the technique that I need to use because when we're doing it in class, 
we're doing it topic by topic. So obviously when I do a question and it's under by parts, you know, OK, I need to do by, I, I need to use by parts. But in the test, there's no heading like by parts or uh, trigonometric integrals and so on. You will have to figure it out for yourself. And the way to do that, like I say, is practice. So the test is three weeks away. Again, that will be a face to face test. So make sure you are studying for it already. Right. So the first type of integrals that we will look we will look at in this section are those that look like this. We have sine AX uh, cos BX DX. So we have a product of uh, sine and cos then also we have sine ax sine bx dx and sine no cos ax cos bx dx so these are the type of integrals we'll look at first now what we want to do with uh, integrals that are in this form is to break this down so that instead of having it as a product, we rewrite it as a sum. And last semester we worked with uh, trigonometric identities involving a product where you would change a product to a sum. If you don't remember that, you need to go back in your notes and uh, practice. Okay. So the first one, okay, I'll show you the uh, how we get one of them and then the other two, I'll just give the identities that you can uh, work out on your own. I think knowing where something comes from, like knowing where a formula comes from helps you to remember it, I think. So in the test, even if you don't remember the exact formula, you can quickly work it out and then get the formula and use it. So, if we have this first one, sine AX cos BX, so here sine and cos are multiplying. We know that we get sine and cos multiplying when we have sine of A plus B or sine of A minus B. So if we have sine of A plus B, we know that this is sine, let me put an X there. This is sine AX cos BX plus uh, sine BX cos AX. And also if we have sine A minus BX, this is sine AX cos bx minus sine bx cos ax. So if we look at what we are trying to work out, it is sine ax cos bx. And we have these two equations that have sine ax cos bx. And the second terms are the same, but one is positive and the other one is negative. So we can just add these two equations together. So we have sine A plus BX plus sine A plus BX. These two will cancel out. And then here we have two sine AX cos BX, but we don't want two sine AX cos BX. We just want sine um, AX cos BX. So we can then divide by two. So we have here two sine AX cos bx, this is equal to sine a plus b plus sine a minus b, there's an x there, okay, and then divide everything by two. So our first identity that we use when we want to integrate something of this form is this one, sine ax cos bx is equal to a half sine a plus b x plus sine a minus b x like that. 
Okay, so that is the first identity, which I'm sure you remember from last semester. So here, if you can see, if I were to rewrite this product like that, this is definitely easier to integrate than this product, because if it's sine A plus B, for example, sine 2x dx that I have to integrate, that is just minus cos 2x over 2. And here, sine, uh, maybe this becomes x, then um, the integral of that is minus cos um, x, and that's it. Okay, so key thing, remember the identity. So this is the first one, and that is where it comes from. And then the other two identities, when you have time or make time, you can actually uh, work them out. Or if you remember them without working them out, that is fine as well. Because in the test, I won't look at whether you worked it out or not. I just want to make sure you used it correctly. So the second identity is cos AX uh, cos BX. This is a half. Uh, so we have cos and cos. We know that comes from cos A plus B and cos A minus B. So here we have cos A plus B plus uh, cos A minus B. There's an X there, there's an X there, and then you close your brackets. Write it better. We have cos A plus B X plus cos A minus B X. Okay, like that. So this is the second identity when you have cos of something multiplying by cos of something, then uh, you can use that. And then we have a sign. What was the first one? Sine cos, and this one was cos cos. Then we have sign sign. So again, here, when you have sine times sine, that also comes from the formula of cos A plus B and cos A minus B. And this formula is minus a half cos A plus B minus cos A minus B X like that. So those are the two, uh, the other two formulas. You can work them out using the formulas for cos A plus B and cos A minus B to derive them. And then we use them. So let's look at some examples of how we make use of this when we want to integrate integrals of this form. So the first one, we have the integral of sine 3x cos 5x dx. So here you just identify your a and your b. So we have a is 3 and b is 5. So here we have sine and cos. So we will have to use um, sine a plus b and sine a minus b. So this is equal to the integral of a half. First one is sine a plus b, which is 8x. And then plus sine, no, yeah, sine uh, a minus b, which is sine of minus 2x dx. Okay, so the half can go outside. So we have a half, the integral of sine 8x. And we know that sine of negative 2x is just the same as negative sine of 2x. So this is minus sine 2x 
dx. And now we can just integrate. This is a half. The integral of sine 8x um, is negative cos 8x. And then we divide by the derivative of 8x, which is 8. And then the derivative, the integral of minus sine 2x is positive cos 2x, so the half also multiplies there. So we have cos 2x, and then we divide by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Then we add our constant of integration. So just writing this nicely, we get cos 4x over 2 minus cos 8x over 16, and then we have our constant of integration. So pretty simple, nothing too difficult to do there, as long as you remember the formula. Okay. And number two, get the integral of sine 4x, sine x, dx, so here we have sine sine, and this comes from cos a plus b cos a minus b, and the formula is just negative a half. I can already take that outside the integral. So here, just to note, my a is 4 and my b is 1. So when I break this down, this is the half. So I've already taken it out like I said, and then uh, I have cos of a plus b, which is cos 5x. No, yeah, cos, yes, cos 5x. And then uh, plus, minus, sorry, and then minus cos a minus b, which is 3x dx. Okay, so we integrate these this is minus a half. The integral of cos 5x is sine 5x over 5. So this is sine 5x over 5. And then negative and negative will become positive. So I have a half multiplied by the integral of cos x is sine 3x over three, and then we add our constant of integration. Then just writing this nicely, we have one over six sine three X minus sine five X over 10 plus C. Okay, then when we have the integral of cos 6x, cos 4x, dx. So here, just take note, a is 6 and b is 4. Okay, so we have cos, cos. So this comes from cos a plus b, cos a minus b. So we can take the half outside. Then the integral of cos a plus b, which is 10x, and then plus uh, cos uh, a minus b, which is 2x dx. So when we integrate this, this is a half. The integral of cos 10x is sine 10x over 10, and the half is there. The integral of cos 2x is sine 2x over 2 plus c. So we have sine 10x over 20 plus sine 4x. Okay. Sine 2x over 4, and then you add your constant of integration. Pretty simple. Again, like I said, um, nothing very complicated there as long as you remember the formula. And the way to remember the formula is by using it over and over again. 
Okay, so we can look at some of the questions in exercise 4.4. Uh, we'll start with number two. This is an, a definite integral. We have to integrate from zero to pi over two. We have cos of three x cos two x dx. So cos and cos. Uh, this comes from cos a plus b cos a minus b. So here, just note that my A is three and my B is two. So I am integrating from zero. First, I need to take the half out. So I'm integrating from zero to pi over two. And the first term is cos A minus A plus B, which is cos five X. And then I have cos A minus B. So three minus two is one. So this is cos X dx. So this is a half and then our integral. Cos, the integral of cos five X is sine five X over five. The integral of cos x is sine x. And here we evaluate from zero to pi over two. Okay, so this is a half. Um, we have sine five times pi over two. So we have five pi over two over five plus sine of pi over two. And here we have zero, zero, sine of zero is just zero. So this can just say minus zero. Okay, so this you can do on your calculator. Uh, sine of pi over two we know is one and then sine of five times pi over two is also one. So I have one over five plus one, which is six over five, and then six over five times a half. This is three over five. And then we'll go with it. Yeah. Uh, Online. And what you next week, do you need that? What do you mean, 500? Oh, Okay, that is our answer. Then number four. Okay, number four is the same. Let's look at number three. At the integral of sine two x cos four x dx. <laughs> <laughs> really? Hi, hi. Moa, are you done? Thank you. Okay. So uh, this one we have sine cos. We say that we get that from sine A plus B, sine A minus B. So here 
uh, A is equal to 2, B is equal to 4, and when we integrate this, the half will go outside, and then we have a sine of A plus B, so that's sine 6X, and then we add sine of A minus B, which is sine of um, minus 2, x dx so we say this is a half integral of a sine 6x and then minus sine 2x dx this is a half the integral of sine let's do that. the integral of sine 6x is negative cos 6x divided by 6 and then the integral of negative sine 2x is positive cos. So I have a half times cos 2x. Here this is a plus 2x over 2. And then you add your constant of integration. So this is, if I write it nicely, I have cos 2x over 4 minus cos 6x over 12 and then we add our constant of integration okay so the rest of the questions um well the first part of the questions in exercise 4.2 you should be able to do them up until number six yeah you should be able to do them in the same way and then on monday we'll continue with more integrals involving uh, trigonometric functions but they look a little bit different i was still waiting for feedback from a lot of you guys i think only four people have said that they want to have face-to-face -face classes and i don't know if that is enough to have that's like 10 percent out of a class of like 34 35 people only four people want to have classes face to face maybe it's better we continue online but uh, you guys can let me know here on teams or on the whatsapp group and then uh, we will see what to do on monday